Okay, this is it. The end of electricity for this section. So 11.9 circuit analysis. So solve this one. Just kidding. So if you look at this, this is just a circuit diagram with lots of different symbols in it. If you want to have some fun, you can try and figure out what some of those are. Uh, we are going to use all of our rules. So we're going to bring everything together now into uh, one comprehensive sort of style of question solving. Uh, I am going to write this one on here as well. Okay, so that's Ohm's Law. So here we go. Okay, hope you enjoy. These are just little puzzles. That's the way I view them. And I solve them a certain way. I like writing on the diagrams. So I always draw my diagrams and write right on them. And I usually use color. I find that very handy. So problem one, the circuit shown in figure one has a source voltage of 12 volts. So I am going to use purple for voltage. So 12 volts, resistance values. Let's go to green for resistance. So I have 15 ohms here at R1, 25 ohms at R2, 35 ohms at R3. Okay, and I am asked to find the source, the current uh, through all of those resistors, and the voltages at those resistors, as well as the total resistance. Okay, so when you look here, I don't have a lot of information. I do have a complete set of resistance information, so I'm going to go after my R total first. So the first thing I'm going to do is get that parallel. So I would have 1 over 25 plus 1 over 35. 1 over RP, and I'm just going to do the calculator version of this for speed's sake. So 1 over 25 plus 1 over 35. I get a long decimal, which I'm not going to erase. Okay, and then I'm going to 1 over X that, and I get 14.6 ohms is my parallel resistance equivalent. Okay, so then I can take that information Okay, if I my total, so I would have 15 plus 14.6 ohms. So the total resistance is 29.6 ohms. Okay, so I might round that off just for the ease of calculation in this one. I might say that's 30 ohms. Now why do I do that? Because I now know the total, and now watch where I write it. I'm going to write the total over here as 30 ohms. Okay, so now that's source information. So now I have two pieces of source information. And the reason I write it like this is because if I have two out of the three necessary pieces of information for Ohm's law, I can solve this. So if I have V equals I R, come on I, there we are. If I have two out of those pieces, which I do at the source, I can figure out the missing piece. So I can put a 12 in here, I can put an I in here, and I can put a 30 here for the resistance. So now when I solve this for I, I have 12 divided by 30, I get 0 0.4 amps is my current. And I'm going to use blue for current, so I'm going to write 0 0.4 amps. Okay, so here's the key. Once you have all three pieces of information, okay, then it's easy to work your way through the problem. So now, if I go to R1, because it's in series, I know that 0 0.4 amps has to go through that resistor. And now again, I have two out of three. So if I take Ohm's law again, I can now take those two pieces up here, okay, and I can do my Ohm's law and figure out what the voltage is. Okay, and this is how these problems will proceed. You just have to systematically attack different pieces of information. So 0 0.4 times 15, we multiply those together and we should get 6, 6 volts. So now I'm going to write in purple 6 volts. Okay, now that's really important because now I have another complete set of information. When I go to do my parallel, the voltage drop over the junctions of this from here to here. Okay, I started with 12. I used up 6 volts at the first resistor. That means I have 6 volts 
at this junction. Okay, so that means because these are in parallel, they both have six volts acting on them. And now because I have two out of the three pieces of information for Ohm's law, I should be able to go in and figure out what the current is at each one of those locations. And if I've done everything right, both of those values should sum for 0.4 by the time I'm done. So if I do a quick Ohm's law on the top one at R2, so we put in, oops, 6 for voltage. We don't know I and our current is 25. Divide that out, 6 divided by 25, 0 0.24. So that is my current. Now I could just use the summation of this R2 current and the R3 current has to be 0.4. But just to prove a point, we're going to solve R3 for current. So 6 divided by 35 and we get 0. 17, which is pretty darn close to the 0.16 I needed. Uh, so that is, I'm just going to make it 0.16 for an ideal case. And the only reason we're off is a little bit of rounding. So what you can see now is I have all three pieces of information at each resistor and the source. And I find that technique works really well for organizing information. It allows me to check things very quickly and we'll give you a chance to try that in the next one or two. Okay, there's the solutions if you want to go through them all. They kept their decimal places a little bit more accurate. Okay, so let's try one more. This is yours. Repeat the sample problem with new values. Okay, so pause it, try it from there. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to try it. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to reveal the answers and you can check because I want to spend some time on the next example. So you should come up with... Uh, 40 ohms total, a source of 1 amp, and our th those are all for the source. And then our R1 was 25 ohms, our R2 was 30 ohms, and our R3 was 30 ohms. Okay, and then we found, of course, the current here would have to be 1 amp. These guys here, because they're equal and their resistance would split the current, so those would be 0 0.5 amps. And then our missing voltage, if we had 25 volts here, that means each one of these would have 15 volts. Okay, so let's get on to something a little meatier. Okay, so here we go. We have series nested inside a parallel inside a series. Okay, so we're going to have to do a little bit of juggling here. Uh, so let's write down what we know. Our source, let's say our source is 12 volts. Our current is 0 0.50 amps at R1. Our V3 is 2.5 volts. Our V4 is 5 volts. Our R3 is 10 ohms and we want to find the source, the totals, a bunch of things. Okay, so <clears throat> right away you can probably see a couple things. If I have 5 volts at R4, I know that I need a 5 volt drop in the top part of that parallel circuit. So that means without doing a whole lot of thinking, R2 is 2.5 as well volts. Okay. Uh, if I have 0 0.50 amps entering R1, that means my source must have been 0 0.50 because it goes from the source through R1 in series, so there's no place for it to go. I can take my resistance, I can do Ohm's law at the beginning here, V equals IR, and if I divide the voltage by the current, I get a resistance of 24 ohms. Okay, and then this that's what this problem becomes. It becomes a, a challenge to use the information you have, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's laws, and put it all together to find all the missing pieces. Okay, 
Uh, so let's have a quick look. If 0.5 amps goes through uh, the first one, let's see what else we know. We have a 10 ohm, so we have three piece, or two pieces of information here at R3. So that would be my next point of attack. So if I take these two and I do an Ohm's law, voltage is 2.5, current is unknown, resistance is 10. So if I divide that through, I get a current of 0.25. So there is another complete pair or triple of information. Now because this is in series, I know this is 0 0.25 amps as well. Okay, I started with 0.5, so then from the parallel summation, those have to all total for 0.5 and each pathway, not three values, but each pathway has to total for 0.5. And now you can see I have two out of the three necessary pieces of information. I should be able to go in and solve for the missing resistances. So V equals IR, so 5 equals 0.25R. Divide that out and you get 20 ohms for this one. Do the same at the top, 2.5 divided by 0.25 and you get 10 ohms and if you go around and check you have three pieces of information for everything but R1. Okay so if we look here at the junction this has a drop of 5 volts between these two. I had 12 to start that means this has to have a drop of 7 volts and now I have two out of the three pieces of information so I can go back to Ohm's law, go 7 divided by 0.5 and I should get 14 ohms. Okay, and that's how you do it. Uh, 0.5, 7, all those numbers look pretty good. There we are. Okay, this one's for you. So set it up, it's the exact same layout. I'm not going to go through it. So pause it and then here are the solutions. Okay, check your answers. And then we'll wrap up 11.9, question number one. That's it, you've completed electricity. Here, I think I missed the B and C. Just do the two of them, those are good enough. Uh, if you're really brave and you want to try number four, go for it. Thanks for tuning in.